Hey everybody, this is John Buck back for another Discrete Time Linear Systems video. Uh, in this one, I'm going to show uh, two examples of applying the ZA tran Z transform. Uh, if you haven't already seen the two previous videos on the Z transform, I'd recommend you pause this one now uh, and go back and, and watch those, and then these examples will make sense. These are examples of applying the definition uh, that we saw there in the earlier video. Okay? So uh, switching over to the whiteboard, the first example is, is one that, that should look very familiar, signal oh, of the kind we've seen already, is, is x of n, we'll call this x1 of n, for example, 1, is 1 third to the n u of n. And, and when I work on these, I often find it helpful to, uh, to draw little cartoons of the signals to remind me uh, where they start and stop, are they blowing up or, or, or dying off as I go on in time. So looking at this, I know u of n, tells me the signal would be zero for negative time. And without bothering to like draw each point out with the stem, I know it's going to, at time zero, the signal will turn on with amplitude one. And then after that, as n grows, one third to the n would die off. So if I sort of, it's sort of like drawing a silhouette, rather than worrying about every sample, the sort of the outline of the signal would look like this. So this is a signal that's, uh, and we'll see in follow on videos uh, on the region of convergence, it's important that it, to know that it goes to the right and it dies down. So let's start from the definition of the Z-transform and see how we would uh, find the Z-transform for the signal. And we'll find that a lot of our practice working with infinite and finite sums from the Fourier transform will help us out here, that it's not like starting over. It's basically new applications of the things we already know. So the definition is the sum of x1 of n, z to the minus n, and we're going to go right ahead and plug this in and the same techniques we were using before, tricks, is we say, oh, right away, this u of n lets me say that, that things are equal to zero for n less than zero. So I can use that to rewrite the lower bound on the sum. Right, so when I do that, I can, and then above that, it's equal to one, so it just multiplying by one drops out. Right, or, or I don't, not, it doesn't drop out, but I don't need to write it, right? One times one third to the n is still one third to the n times z to the minus n. The next little piece is to recognize that I can treat this as z to the minus 1 to the n, right? Sort of undoing that property of multiplying exponents, that I could factor this into minus 1 times n, and so I can say this, these two are the same, because if I multiply this back through, I'd just be multiplying the exponents. So when I do that, I can combine the two bases, right? I can use the property that if I'm multiplying two things with the same exponent, but different bases, I can write this as one third times z to the minus one, the whole thing to the n. And now I want you to pause, look at that sum for a minute, pause the video and think about what kind of sum is that. All right, and back. Hopefully you said infinite geometric sum. We've seen this one several times in different forms in the Fourier transform, right? Where we say this is an infinite geometric sum where the, the term a or alpha, depending on which, which version you like, you can say the thing that's being raised to a higher and higher power is alpha. So we know that this will be equal to 1 over 1 minus 1 third z to the minus 1 as long as alpha has magnitude less than 1. And we, we sort of mentioned this in the Fourier transform, but we often sort of went right past it. It's gotten really important right now. This, is, this, is, this idea of when does the sum converge is the biggest change going from Fourier transforms to Z transforms. In Fourier transforms, we just said it converges or it doesn't. Now, what we're going to say is what values of Z does it converge for? Every time we do a Z transform, very important you work that out. When does it converge? What values of Z does it converge? Not shouldn't say when, because that implies time. What values of Z does this sum converge for? So I've got one time, uh, one third times uh, Z to the minus one. Well, that's one over Z. I need the magnitude of this to be less than one. I can multiply both sides of this equation. Uh, well, I can use the property that I can now say a magnitude of a product as the product of the magnitudes, right? And then I can multiply both sides by magnitude z. And on the, on the right-hand side, these two cancel out. I get z over z, magnitude of one over z times magnitude of z is one. So I'm left with, and oh, and magnitude of a third is just a third. So I get one third is less than magnitude z. So this sum will converge as long as z is bigger than one third. So that's the main uh, idea I need here. 
So whenever I write a Z transform, I want you to get you know build the right habits right from the start. When I write my answer, it's not enough just to say it's one over one minus one third Z to the minus one. You always have to include the region of convergence is what we call this. The, the, the values of Z where that sum, where this infinite sum converge. We call this, this whole thing, this inequality, the region of convergence. And no Z transform is complete without it. Okay, so very important. In fact, I probably should have written it in red rather than, than blue. To see why, let's go on to our next example. I'm going to run this video a little longer because I want to put these two back to back where you'll see them. So when, when we looked at this case, we saw that one third to the n u of n, oh, one more thing before we move on too, is just for a consistency check, we say, well, one third to the n u of n, I know that Fourier transform, right? We knew, we, we already saw, we, we saw earlier in the semester that signals like this that converge, right? Their sums converge. Fourier transform would be one over one third times e to the minus j omega. Well, if I set z equal to e to the j omega, that's what we'll get here. So that's a, that's consistent what we saw in the previous video, that the z transform evaluated at z equals e to the j omega gives me the Fourier transform. So the Fourier transform is like a special case of the z transform, or to say it the other way around, the z transform is a generalization of the Fourier transform. But by generalizing it, we need to worry about when can we use these equations, x of z, what values of z are we allowed to use them because the sums converged? So I take it back. I'm going to pause this video here. I'll do the second example in its own video to keep these sort of short and crisp. But let's remember this, keep this in mind, this 1 over 1 minus 1 third z to the minus 1, because the next video will drive home with sledgehammer ferocity why the region of convergence is essential. Okay, so that's all for this video. I'll see you in the next one.